I heard a lot of amazing feats that Tony has done. When I was searching on the internet for words of inspiration during the time I was so down, his words were frequently showing up. I later learned that he is a powerful coach, motivational speaker, businessman, philanthropist, and that's just some of the roles he plays. The unlimited power that he's talking about in this book is not how to control or manipulate other people. It is the power over oneself. Majorly, how to perform at our peak. I think we all need this. The book was published 10 years before I was born, but even today, I see that the lessons that can be gotten from here do not become stale. They are still relatable and applicable in these current times. I think it can be classified as a classic in the self-help realm. It is stuffed with many tools to help make the reader be empowered. Hence, the title is true to its promise. It primarily uses lessons from neuro-linguistic programming. I like that he inserts anecdotes of famous figures and supplements scientific evidences to emphasize his points. It is not like a textbook that just focuses on what should be learned. I was at the same time entertained and learning while reading it. Actually, it was not my first time to encounter the topic on NLP. Before this book, I read a book titled NLP, The Essential Guide to Neurolinguistic Programming, written by Tom Hoviar, Tom Dutz, and Susan Sanders. I saw such book in a school fair. I was actually intrigued because I saw the same title on the desk of our psychometrician. I scanned that book and saw a part where it discusses the posture affects feelings. I said to myself that this perhaps could help me become better too. Then I bought it. Here are some of my key takeaways. Most people take very little conscious action to direct their states. We don't mind much our states thinking that they are us. For me, I grew up like that. But constant education through reading books, I have learned to separate feelings and experiences from myself. Schools did not teach me such concept. I acquired that I do not need to succumb myself to a negative state and that I have a power to deliberately change if I want to. Why do I need to get rid of negative states? If they stay too long, they may evolve into powerful monsters which can devour and destroy me. Napoleon Hill asserts the same notion. He states that the negative thinking won't lead us to success. According to his book, Think and Grow Rich. To start with our own behaviors, we have to start with our own beliefs. If we want to model excellence, we need to learn to model the beliefs of those who achieve excellence. No matter how many good books I read or advices I received, they won't be impactful if I do not start with myself. I need to start internally. The power lies in me. Therefore, should I want to see change, I must first start by changing my behaviors. Indeed, the legendary Batman would agree with me because his stance is just the same. It is not who we are underneath, but what we do defines us. But before I actually change my behaviors, I should start first with my beliefs. As beliefs are powerful, I need to be aware with them and be in control. My beliefs can either help or hinder me in achieving the goals I desire. I must continually cultivate beliefs so I can harvest positive results too. Upon realization, many successful people have positive beliefs and habits. 
I intend to emulate them for my betterment. I see that such ways are tested and proven already by them. So why not try the same routes? I perhaps can achieve whatever they have achieved, or even more. It's like how Tony Robbins emulated the, success the successful Jim Rod. I believe that if one person can do it, another man can do it too. It is possible. Congruity is the major key to personal power. Congruity means alignment. Whatever we do should be aligned with what we feel. We must not take a half-half stance because problem will arise. To be in total harmony with myself, I should be in tune with, uh, with what I am thinking. For instance, if I feel happy, I should not hide it. I must not try to suppress it so as to create unity with the body and mind. If there is a coordination between two, synchronization shall result. My friend once remarked that he could determine who is a leader or not in a certain gathering. He said that his radar is based on aura. I guess that aura comes from congruity. Upon reflection, if I want to assert myself, I should do it with an assertive voice, breathing, and body posture. I should not show any hint of hesitance to get the proper response I desire. A real decision is measured by the fact that you've taken a new action. If there's no action, you haven't truly decided. There are times that we have decided what to do already, but still see ourselves in the same old place. There's something wrong about that. What really matters most is not what's in our mind, but what we actually do. Actions speak louder than what's in our head. I can analogize decisions in mind as organizational plans in an institution. They may come in a strategic and, ex and exhaustive form, but if they are not implemented, then they did not really happen. Organizations look for tangible results, and so should we. We say that we are going to do things and even promise, but what counts is the actual action to make things go forward. When we undertake actions, we move and solve problems. From such, we can see the effects, and if there are things that do not go to what is planned, then we can try and to modify. This is better than just fantasizing. In order to truly change, grow, and prosper, we need to become consciously aware of the rules we have for ourselves and others. Of how we really measure or judge success or failure. Otherwise, we can have everything and feel nothing. This is the power of values. Values pertain to beliefs that are important to us. They relate to meaning, to our purpose in life. They are from the term itself what we essentially value. Values are what we cherish. However, there may be times that we learned of dated values as inculcated by some forces in society. We need to continually clarify our values hence. Examples of values are friendship, love, and faith. They are called virtues. But there are also values such as pride and gluttony which are termed vices. Some people may get to cherish evil values which promise pleasure or other benefits. They often lead to pain, however. Therefore, we need to reflect 
if we possess right values or if there is a need to organize them properly, it is our obligation to ourselves so as to thrive.